Hey, how's it going? I'm Derek Kirk with Vectron, and today I'm going to show you how to create a redshift material that you will be able to put on an object that's inside of a cloner that will allow it to have complete control over all the colors of individual objects within that cloner, all within just one material. That way you don't have to make a bunch of copies of your object with different materials on each object and slide those into the cloner. This will be able to do one material that will be able to control multiple colors from within this one material. Let's check it out. Okay, so for a quick overview of when you would use this sort of material and what kind of instance this would be appropriate to use it. Uh, what we've got done here is we set up a scene that's very simple. We have a button that's actually from the content browser, the 3D Objects Volume 1 Arts and Crafts button. That's actually if you have R21, um, you have uh, access to that. So we've put that in a subdivision surface just to kind of make it a little smoother. We put that in a cloner, and in this cloner, we made it a grid array. Gr a grid array. We made it a grid array and raised it up above the ground. And then we added dynamics to it and a plane with dynamics on that as well. We advanced that forward 25 frames, let that simulation play out, so all the buttons fell and kind of scattered across the floor here in an organic pile of buttons. So we've got that going on. And so instead of having multiple buttons all inside of my cloner, each button having its own material, where which would work, but if I wanted to change material, I would go in and I would change each material, open each material up, change it, each material, change it, each material, change it if I wanted to change all the materials. So what this is going to allow you to do is have one material on one object, and you'll be able to control the amount of colors, what colors they are, and how they're distributed through proportionally throughout your cloner object. So first, we're going to go to Create, Redshift, Materials, Material. Here's our redshift shader graph for this color. All we're going to do is type in color. Not even have to finish typing it out. We're going to go here, the user data under this purple one. Color user data, bring that in. Under this tab, in the general tab, we have attribute name. We're going to go down to object geometry ID color. Okay, redshift geom ID color. That's going to be important. So what that's going to do is we plug this in to our diffuse. Which I'm not sure why my... UI is being so sluggish. Sorry about that. You see, we already have some color information here. So if I render this, so if you render that, you can see we get all kinds of crazy colors. And that's kind of fun and that's neat. So we've all we've done is plug in our Redshift user data into our Redshift Diffuse, and we've already got multi colors. The problem is uh, we can't really control these colors individually very well. Like, I didn't get to pick these colors. They're just kind of random, and they're not exactly the most appealing colors. So what we can do to fix that, to have control over it, is add a ramp. And that's one of the textures, ramp. So we're going to go color user data into the ramp, and the ramp into the diffuse. So under source, it's default set to auto. We're going to choose alt, and then mapping, we want to leave it vertical. And down here for the ramp, this is where we're going to choose our colors. And we don't really want them to fade because we want each object to actually be completely different. We don't want them to kind of fade between each other. So we're going to right click this dot in the middle. We're going to go to interpolation of all knots. And we're going to go to step. So now we see we've got black and white. So you can drag these around and move them around. You can see already what this is doing in our scene. We'll go ahead and hit render. We can slide this over. So you can see right now there are two colors. There's the white ones and there's the black ones. And the more I slide this, the more black ones there are. Very neat. So what we can do is you can go pick your color. And you can do it m multiple ways. And so let's say I want like a nice, I don't know, like a light blue like that. Okay. So now we see we've got this light blue. Okay, so now we've got this nice blue. I kind of actually like the white with this blue, so I'm going to leave this white. I'm going to slide it down a little bit. I'm going to click down here, see this little gray icon. I'm going to slide this back just a bit. This gray icon right here. I'm going to click that, and that's going to create a new new little nub in here. And we're going to double-click that, and that's going to open up our color wheel. And so this is where we can pick another color. And what I like to do is if I click this color dropper and click that first color I chose, and then I go to my color wheel, and then I choose this little X, this little four thing. And then what that's going to do is that's going to create four colors that go well with that color. And then you can choose these little boxes. Or you can do something like this, which will give you three colors. Or these, uh, this will give you the exact complementary color of a color you have selected. 
So let's say, yep, so now this orange would be the exact opposite of that. I'm going to brighten it up a little bit because I want a little variance of it. And there we go. And then you just keep going. Let's say we want a like kind of a light. You don't want to go just pick willy-nilly colors, honestly, because it's just not going to look very good. We want colors that they are going to go together well. So let's pick this orange again. Yeah, I like just a little softer version of the orange with the blue. So there you go. Now you've got four colors here. So now you can choose, you know, what do you want? If you want there to be more blue, you just slide it up. And you can rearrange these and to change them and stuff like that. But that is it. So you've got one material. Color user data plugged into a ramp. Make sure this is set to geometry ID. Make sure the ramp is set to alt. And then the step interpolation is set to linear or sorry into step and that's plugged into the diffuse and then obviously you can plug in uh, a little max on noise I always like to do that into the roughness we'll do a little random seed change the scale a bit and then make it a little brighter because that's too dark Actually, I think I want the opposite direction. I want this to be darker. So I want it to be shiny. There we go. Yep. So that's one way to do it. But another way uh, that I like to do it, and this is just a little helpful hint, is I like to go to this website, which is cocoolers.co, colors with two O's in the middle there, .co. And what you can do here is, honestly, you can just... Once you open it up, you can just hit spacebar, and it will give you color palettes that go together. And it'll, it'll just rotate around through them. So you can get a cool color palette. So you like one, you can lock it in. It gives you the hex codes. It gives you alternative shades. You can choose between them. It's very nice. So all of these are going to go well together. So all of these are going to go well together. It's going to be very nice. So then you, what you can do is inside your colors... Open this up, open this up, and then we just would say for the for the ramp, we have to do it on our, our slide monitor. I'm just going to color pick these colors against that, uh, this right here. Color pick, pick, okay, color pick, pick. Okay, gotta pick. <laughs> pick. That's actually a pretty, very similar color already. And this, yep, and then we'll add one more color because there was a fifth one just for fun. Boom. Here we go. Okay. Oh. There we go. So now we got a bunch of buttons of whatever custom colors we wanted. Let me go ahead and bring this f-stop back down. Voila! So there you go. Little noise for the roughness. But color user data, geometry ID, alt, set your colors. And voila! You have custom colors of exactly what you want, completely in your control. There you go. Hope you hope you enjoyed. Uh, be sure to be sure to like and subscribe. I'm going to be doing more of these kind of quick tips um, throughout the way. I'm going to do more of my in-depth things. I'm going to go to are going to be on Skillshare and Udemy right now. I have an intro to the basics of Redshift available on Skillshare and Udemy. There are links below in the description. Uh, also, there are more coming very soon. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for for listening, and see you next time.